down by two. You got it, Ryan. You can't win, Let's do it. Come on, Ryan. Come on, Ryan. Let's Let's win, Ryan. Come on now. Let's go, Ryan. Come on, get it in. Get it back, Ryan. Ryan. Taking them until I tell you different. All right? Let's get you on base. Tommy's up next. He's three for three today. Okay? Okay, got it. Okay, okay. Let's go. All right, get two out there. Okay, okay. Let's go, doing out there you saw me give a take sign you know what take means i thought i could hit it you thought you're not supposed to think you're supposed to listen to your coach arnie i'm just trying to tell him no it's enough it's just a game okay yeah well i'm sorry dad forget about it so i'll ask oh, okay. barbara we'll get him next time barbara the girls want to go straight to the dam. Oh, oh, well, what about lunch? We'll get something there, Mom. You too? Is it okay? Well, that's okay with us. <laughs> okay, you be back by five. Barbecue tonight. Good game, Chris. Thanks. Have a good time. Hey, Let's Tommy, go. good game. You too, Ryan. Hello, Chris. Hey, Tommy. Yeah. You going to the dance? I guess so. What are you doing, Hanson? Keep pull it, Geek. Shut up. You gonna make me? Yeah, I'll make you. Come on. Hey, Ryan. Cut it out. That's all. See you later. Forget it. He gave it a good try. Where's Tommy? I don't see him. I don't care. Besides, he was mean to my brother. Oh. 
And look who's here. You gotta pay the toll. Get lost, Nick. Morons? Catch you later. My dad's gonna barbecue. I know. Ow! I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. You're all feet. Here. Hang on. The places I remember, faces I'll forget, times that I'll treasure. Times I will regret And hearts that keep on beating Hey man, hearts that you remain chair. still There's men that keep on fighting and Ones that never will And the daylight never come Cause the night it will not end Moon sails across the sky to me what do you want? Why you... Hey, just get away. Stop. Uh, hey, you Leave kid. me alone. Knock it off. Chill out. Oh, hey. What a jerk. It's your time, baby. You sure nailed him. Just get out of here. Just get out of here. Four times in the last two years, huh? That's unbelievable. It doesn't matter what kind of security they put in, they still get break-ins. Well, that's the city for you. Yeah. You keep telling me how to close up, you know, move Sam. out here. Yeah, thanks, Barbara. Honey. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Did you see Jane's new car? What'd she get? Cadillac Seville. Really? Yeah. Boy, Frank's business must be doing very well. I guess so. Speaking of which, I've been thinking of going back to work. Oh, no, 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 no. Why not? Okay, so tell me why I can't have a job. Who else is going to volunteer for every socially responsible committee in this town? There's the library, school board. Don't forget the animal shelter. The animal shelter. So I like to keep busy. No, no, too busy. I'm sorry, a paying job is out of the question. Let's see. Cambled eggs. Mm, my hey. favorite. Put that down. <laughs> yes, yes, mother. Really? It's okay, I'm used to it. Girls, will you take these plates, put them on the table, please? Sure. Where's your brother? He's cleaning up in the port. We're sleeping out there tonight. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Uh, call him and tell him it's time to eat, okay? Okay, Mom. All set. Good. Mom says it's time to eat. Um, Tommy's coming over later, if it's all right. No big deal. 
what? It can be my date. Sure. <laughs> Freedom and we. Oh, no, you better take it off. Oh, Look at you. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. You have to take that off. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, More coffee? Yeah, I'll have another cup. No, he can't sleep then. I'm driving. There you go. Don't you think we ought to check on the children? Well, I'm sure they're fine. They're awfully quiet out there. You're complaining? <laughs> Shit! Oh, oh! What do you have? Video landing's closing down. And there's a sign in the window that says so. <laughs> what? <laughs> Earthy <to> Chris. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I bet. I fold. Fold. Dealer folds. Two pairs. Nines and fours. Jackson threes. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Shirt. Yeah. You have to take your shirt okay, off. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, oh, no. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. I guess my sister likes you. Yeah, she's cool. Hey, I think Sally likes you. Nah, she thinks I'm just a kid. Yeah, well, you never know with girls, huh? Hey, look, you're not so mad about the game, are you? I mean, Ryan can be a jerk sometimes. 
No, it's all right. Cool. See you later. <sighs> See you later, Tommy. Because it's not fair. And you're always leading him on and teasing him. So what? He doesn't mind. Besides, he's kind of cute sometimes. Just leave him alone. I like him. I'm only being friendly. Yeah, right. Oh, fine. I'll leave him alone. I'll barely even talk to him. Good. What are you doing? Thought we were sleeping outside. I don't feel like it. Where are you going? To sleep in the fort. Fine. <laughs> Later. Sally, where are you going? To sleep in the fort. Want me to come with you? <gasps> no. Some batting practice this morning? Sure. Oh, would you go get Sally for breakfast and tell your sister to get out of the bathroom? Kathy, get out of the bathroom! I could have done that myself. Everyone's a little freaked. Thank you. How bad is it? Bad. I got a niece about the same age. Medical examiner inside. Should be finishing up. All right, what do you got? The victim is Sally Frawley, 15, friend of the Hansons girl, Kathy. She spent the night alone in there. They call it the fort. Uh, some fort. Arnie Hanson, uh, he has a garage out near the airport, doesn't he? Same guy. Sally went back out to bed after midnight. Hanson boy found the body this morning. Anybody here see anything? Still talking to the neighbors. Forced entry? The gate was unlatched. Now, the handsome boy, Chris, says that he latched it last night. Doesn't know how it got undone. Yeah. Anything else? Well, <clears throat> the handsome kids, the victim, and Tommy Wilson over there were in the fort playing strip poker earlier in the evening. I have Osterman uh, taking a statement from Wilson. He a suspect. Home in bed before the girl went back outside.
What do we got? Strangulation. Possibly a rope or a chain. It's preliminary, of course. Was she raped? Again, preliminary, but I'd say no. Indications of a struggle, yes. She's pretty badly beaten. What a mess. I hope our guys are up to it. This kind of thing doesn't happen in Parker. You think about calling in the state police? No one hold it against you. Not yet. We'll see what happens. Oh, the lab works sometime tomorrow. Mrs. Hansen? Detective John Avery. I know this is a tough time for all of you. Uh, something like this is... Uh, well, just a few more questions. I understand. Go ahead. Is there anyone you can think of who might have done this? <laughs> no. Enemies, uh, friends at school, jealous boyfriends. No. She had no enemies. She was good. Okay. If you think of anything, let me know. Mr. Hansen? John Avery. Uh, there seems to be some confusion about the gate being closed last night. Can you tell me about that? Um, of course, City latched it. I don't... Well, it was open this morning. Barbara? 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 Connie? Look, I'm sorry. You can't. Barbara? Please. Barbara? Miss, Connie? you cannot go in there. Tell them to let her in. Let her go. Connie. 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 Sally. Sally. Connie. Connie. Leave a unit behind. Okay. All right, coming through. Please clear that out. Connie, Connie, don't. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, so sorry. Sally. Sally's dead, isn't she? Yes, son, she is. Thank you. Clear, right? I don't want to have to ask you again, please. Yes, thank you. How is she? Oh, she's lying down. Barb will stay with till Sam gets here. He's not home. We haven't been able to find him. Do you have any ideas? Oh well. uh... He's probably out on a call. He's got his own business, heating and air conditioning. <laughs> um, Mr. Hansen, uh, things are kind of crazy around here right now, and I need to get back to the station. And I haven't had a chance to get a full statement from your son yet. Would it be okay if I take him with me and, and talk to him there? What about? Not anything else you might know. I mean, you know how kids are. Sometimes they talk more freely away from their parents. Arnie. I need your help. Come upstairs now. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Hansen. Is that going to be okay? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, it won't be long. Arnie, please. I guess so. Thanks. We'll take good care of him. Yes? Unit 7, clear. We'll take him down, have a little talk with him. Okay. I'll clean up here. Oh. Should I sit back here? No, no, no. You come on and right up front with me. Okay. So you remember latching the gate last night? Yeah. And it was unlatched this morning. Yeah, I guess. Well, how do you explain that, Chris? Maybe I didn't latch it. Maybe I just thought I did. 
It's just a little gate. Yeah, but you said you latched it. So? Well, does that happen sometimes, that you do something and you forget that you did it? Sometimes. All right. So you're out in the fort, and you're fooling around. You, uh, you play strip poker, you have a pillow fight, and you start wrestling with the girls. Yeah. How'd you feel about that? What do you mean? Well, I mean, that, that make you mad, that make you excited, what? Excited, I guess. Where is she? She's in the bedroom Barbara's with her. Sally. Where's Sally, Arnie? They took her away, Sam. I'm so sorry. You're sorry? Sally's dead and you're sorry? Get your hands off me. I left her here with you, Arnie. Sam, if there's anything I could have done. You could have taken care of her, Arnie. You could have made sure that nothing happened. Nothing happened to your kid, did it, huh? Dad, yeah, hey, hey, Sam. Sam. Easy, partner. Sam. Come on. Sam. Well, sir, you say you thought about going back out to the fort again and seeing Sally, but that you didn't. You went to bed. And then you tell me that you don't remember what you did after Sally went out there. Tell me the truth. I don't remember anything after going to bed. You mean to tell me you don't remember if you saw Sally again before the morning? No. We're trying to help you here, son. You know that, don't you? <sighs> yes. Did you ever dream about Sally, Chris? I thought about her. You thought about her? Good. Did you ever think about you and her uh, getting close, touching each other? You mean like when we're wrestling? Yes. Exactly like that. And kissing. Did you? Yeah. Do you think Sally thought about you? I, I don't know. You never know with girls. When you were wrestling together, touching each other, she didn't ask you to stop? No. So you must have figured she liked it as much as you, right? I guess so. Chris, we're gonna go outside for a minute. Uh, can we get you anything? I'm cold. You want a blanket? What do you think? I think we got something. I don't know, he's just a kid. No, he's old enough. We're moving a little fast on this, don't Look, you think? if we're wrong, we're wrong. I think he's hiding something. What's the name of that psychologist out at, at, uh, at Family Services? Doris Serwin. Yeah, yeah, let's get her out here. I think that uh, maybe she can help us get the kid to talk. Uh -huh. It'd be nice if we could uh, clear this before panic sets in. Yeah, out. yeah, I wouldn't look bad on our records either. Why don't you go get the kid his blanket? And read him his rights, just in case. I guess it helps to blame someone. I can't even imagine what Sam and Connie are feeling right now. Poor little girl. Where's Chris? He's not back from the station. What are you talking about? Detective Avery took him down to the station. And you let him go? Well, you... It was just for a few questions. He said to bring him right that back. That child was in no state to go anywhere with anybody. What were you thinking, Arnie? Damn it, Barbara. The place was a madhouse. What time did they take him? I don't know. I'll go get him. No, no, I feel better if you stay here with Kathy. We don't know who's out there. Look, there's probably nothing to worry about. You know I'm here to help you, Chris. Yes. 
Why don't you just lie down? You'll feel much better when you remember everything that really happened. I want to remember. I just can't. Then that's why I'm here. Are you warm enough now? Yes. What I'd like to do first is to get you to relax. People remember better when they're relaxed. Okay. You'll do everything I say? Good. Now close your eyes and start taking long, deep breaths. Detective Avery, uh, where's Chris? Is he all right? Chris is fine. He was very upset when he got here. He could barely talk, so we brought in a specialist, a doctor, who's with him now. A doctor? What kind of doctor? I, I want to see my son right now, please. Ma'am, I'm afraid that's not possible. Why? All I can tell you is that your son has been able to provide us with some important information pertaining to this case. But how could he? That's what we're finding out. That's why the doctor's here. It shouldn't be much longer. That's it. Nice and slow. Listen to my voice. Breathe deeply. Think of what it would feel like. to float in a pool of warm water, nice and slow. Now, Chris, do you remember going out to the fort again that night? But it is possible. Yes? Yes. Because you wanted to be with Sally. You liked Sally, didn't you, Chris? Yes. you to be with her. No. So you got mad. You got very mad. Isn't that what really happened, Chris? Isn't that what really happened? Ms. Hanson, this is Dr. Irwin. happened here? Mrs. Hanson, Chris has something he wants to tell you. Something he wants to get off his chest. Chris, honey, talk to me. Are you all right? I'm feeling better, Mom. Go ahead, Chris. Your mother has a right to know. Know what? 
I did it, Mom. I killed her. I killed Sally. That's not possible. Oh, Chris. I know. Here she is now. In here. Okay. Thank you. Interrogation. Pretty soon. Okay. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Hansen. My name's Elizabeth Coyle. I'm the district attorney assigned to this case. Where's Chris? He's going to be out any moment. You can spend some time with him before they take him down to the juvenile detention center. I know how difficult this is for you. Do you? Have you contacted an attorney yet? No. Have whoever it is call me as soon as possible. Chris, just tell me what happened. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? It was an accident. I'm sorry, Dad. Come on, Chris. Come on. Oh, Chris. No. Honey. Hey, I don't want to believe it either. He said it was an accident. No. No way. Chris wouldn't do it. Not to Sally. Why are you saying these things? It happened. No, it didn't. Did you talk to that lawyer? I left a message on his machine. I'll call again tomorrow. I think Chris is going to be all right. He seems so exhausted. How would you be after you admitted killing someone? Stop it, Ernie. Just stop it! No, you stop it! You're the one that always babied him and spoiled him. You're blaming me? No! I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Is it our fault, Barbara? Is it something we did? Is it something we didn't do? That's what I keep thinking. It was an accident. Uh, all I know is that we have to help him, Arnie. Accident? Did you see her face? Because when I close my eyes, that's what I see. I saw him. How can we help him? If he did that, how? Because we have to. Because he's our son. My son. So what do you think? Interesting. Everybody wants this case to go away. We don't understand. Teenage sex games turn to murder. They get ugly for both sides. Uglier for the town. I don't care why they're doing it. I only care how it affects our son. Well, then turn it down. What does that mean? Well, either you like some coffee. What's our alternative? Don't cooperate. Plead not guilty. I see serious problems as to how the police obtained your son's confession. Well, are you talking about a technicality? I'm talking about the law. What happens if they convict Chris as an adult? Probably get life imprisonment, possibly the death penalty. And if he's tried as a juvenile? He'll probably be out by the age 18. 
That's four years. Against the death penalty. If he's found guilty. Look, I understand. You need to take some time and give it some careful thought. But if you're looking for somebody to hold your son's hand on the way to jail, I'm not your guy. I'd fight. Arnie? I don't know. Please found something. I think it's important. Okay. So that boy Nick always wears that same color bandana. Well, a lot of these kids wear bandanas. Do you know Nick? Uh, no, I don't, but my daughter does, and so did Sally. In fact, the afternoon of the day she was killed, she had some sort of scene with him at the park concert, and Kathy was there. Nick was coming on to Sally getting all grabby and stuff so she shoved him and he didn't like it i mean maybe he followed the girls home and when everybody was asleep he came in through the gate okay we'll check it out so you'll bring him in for questioning if necessary look your daughter saw a piece of red cloth which may or may not be a bandana which may or may not lead back to nick that's all mrs hansen if there's any evidence that points to someone other than Chris, we'll follow it up. And meanwhile, my son stays in jail. You can post bail at the arraignment. Detective Avery, please help us. Go find Nick? Yeah. But it's a waste of time. We got opportunity, we got motive, we've got a signed confession. You know something? I feel sorry for those people. Now pass it over, pass it over. Here you go. Come on. Here you go. That's it. It's up. It's up. Right now. Up. Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. How's Kathy? She's fine. She sends you big love. Can she come visit me? Of course she can. How come Dad didn't come? He had to work. I think he's ashamed of me. Oh, Chris, that's just not true. Mom, have you seen Sally's family? I wrote them a letter saying that I was sorry. I never meant to hurt Sally. You think that's okay? I think it's fine. Could you give it to him for me? Of course I will. Barb, I'm sorry I'm late. It's okay. I got hung up at the shop. How's Chris? Got to get him home, Arnie. We will. He knew I had to work. Yeah, he knew. I hope this doesn't take too long. Things are going crazy at the shop. What's wrong? Oh, let's go. What's wrong, Arnie? I overheard a couple of my mechanics talking. They feel sorry for me. 
Poor Arnie. He's a nice guy, but his kid's a murderer. I could have killed him. Don't say that. What are we supposed to do? We have to learn to ignore it. You said on the phone that you had news for us? I'm afraid it's not good. Due to the nature of the crime, we're now considering charging Chris as an adult. But you said, you said you would charge him as a juvenile. What do you mean the nature of the crime? The medical examiner has released the autopsy results. Here's a copy for you. The bite marks to the torso were deep enough to break the skin. The facial injuries were more extreme than was originally thought. Her cheekbones were shattered. The jaw was broken in two places. They think she was struck repeatedly with a fist. Obviously, this changes things. Yes, it does. What is it? Our son didn't do this. Mrs. Hansen. Seeing something like this is a shock, I know. No, he said that he pressed a pillow over her face. He said he killed her. I don't care what he said. This was done by a sick animal. And an animal did not write this letter to Connie Frowley. My son is innocent. I was hoping, with your cooperation... No. Look at these. Look at them, Arnie. Then you tell me that Chris hurt Sally this way. Mrs. Hanson, you are making a big mistake. I was. But I'm not anymore. I'm gonna fight you every inch of the way on this. My fish okay? They're fine. I've been feeding them every day. Thanks. So what's everyone saying about me? Nobody talks to me about anything. What's Tommy think? I haven't seen him since... You know. I'm sorry. I don't know why it happened. It didn't happen the way you remember, Chris. It didn't. It's really terrible in here. At night, people are yelling and fighting. I just feel like dying. Don't say that. Be strong. I'll have you out of here before you know. I promise. Okay. I read your autopsy report on Sally Frowley, and I wanted to know if I could ask you some questions. Of course. Thank you. You're aware that my son confessed to Sally's murder? Yes. What is ligature strangulation? It's strangulation by tying off the airway by the use of a foreign object. A rope, cord, wire, anything that binds. So, a pillow? No. My son said that he pressed a pillow over her face. I know. I noted it on my report. Why didn't you tell the police? I did tell them. Why haven't you dropped the charges against my son? We checked out Nick Castillo. He has an alibi for the night of Sally Frost. I'm not murder. here about Nick Castillo. I spoke to your medical examiner. Yes? Sally died from ligature strangulation, not suffocation as Chris described. Also, her facial injuries were caused by blows from a fist. He doesn't have scratches or, or bruises on either hand. 
Now, according to Dr. Lieberman, that's physiologically impossible. Yeah, then maybe he wore gloves. Well, then it'd still be bruising. Did you find any blood-stained gloves? Did you even look? Yeah, we looked. Sure. Maybe he stashed them. Anything's possible. You're still going ahead with this? Mrs. Hansen, your son committed a murder. Now, if he's a little confused about the exact method, maybe we can understand why. My son is innocent. Very professional, John. Sorry. Mr. Panetta, is our son's case winnable? Well, frankly, the case against your son is a house of cards. I mean, the confession doesn't fit the facts. <laughs> it's sort of like uh, arresting a man with a butter knife for a drive-by shooting across town. On the other hand, any confession, however inaccurate, is compelling. Juries like simple explanations. Are you interested in representing us? If you want me, frankly, this case makes me mad. Is that good? Very good. So what would our uh, plan be? Well, first I'll call Coyle and tell her I'm your man. Next, you find a way to postpone and get your son home. Do you have any way to raise the money? We'll put our house up for security. That'll work. Next, we take a stab at suppressing some of the so-called evidence, and last but not least, we try and keep this in juvenile court. Is all this possible? Possible, yes. Piece of cake, no. Look, I promise you I'll do my damnedest. But I gotta tell you, in this game, there are no guarantees. Thanks. Hi, Chris. What are you doing? I'm Lou. Lou Panetta. Nice to meet you. Yeah. You know, I gotta... Boy, just about your age, I think. He's going to the ninth grade in the fall. Yeah, me too. Or at least I'm supposed to be. You will. That's why I'm here. I'm going to help you. I don't know how much your mother told you about me, but... Um, she said you're going to be my lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> you... I guess you know in general what a lawyer does, right? Yeah, I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> Not quite as simple as all that, but... Uh, Charges against you are very, very serious. You know that, don't you? Now, in order for me to help you, you've got to help me. You've got to help me by trying to remember every single detail, everything that happened on that night. I can't. I just get confused every time I try. I don't know what happened. That's all right. Don't worry about it. We'll just take it one step at a time, okay? All right, now, the first thing I need you to tell me is anything that you can remember about the day before you found Sally's body. You mean about the dance? Especially the dance. And tell me about Nick, the kid wearing the red bandana. I was dancing with Sally. He cut in. Sally got mad and she pushed him down. He started screaming and threatening everybody. So what happened next? We all just left. Okay. Mm
myself a sandwich. Do you want one? No, thanks, honey. I'll eat later. Want some coffee? Yeah, with two sugars. Why should we change our number because of some crank? I mean, let's trace the corner, find the SOB. No, I don't want to start living like that, Arnie. I don't want revenge. I just want this to end. There he is. <laughs> Come on, pal. Let's go home. What the hell? This is because of what I did. Kathy, get in the house. Come on, Chris. Kathy, Chris, go get washed up. You can help me make this out. Sick bastards. No! Don't take that down. Let's get ready for dinner. Probably could arrange some sort of police protection. Might not be a bad idea. No, I, I, I don't think so. Well, we'll think about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've been assigned a judge in the case. His name is Baldwin. You know him? Six months ago, he tried a 16-year-old boy for aggravated assault as a juvenile. He let him off of probation. About a month later, the boy severely beat a 70-year-old woman while robbing her. Baldwin took a lot of political heat. Is what you're saying that he might try Chris as an adult? I hope not. I mean, there's a big difference between 14 and 16. Yeah, but this is a murder charge, not aggravated assault. 
Could be a problem. Well, let's talk about the preliminary hearing, all right? I filed two motions to suppress. One for the bite evidence, the other for the confession. So if the judge thinks Chris is innocent, this... No, 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 no. Guilt or innocence is not the issue here. This prelim is specifically to determine whether we can prevent certain evidence from being admitted during trial. How do we do that? Well, by presenting our experts and discrediting theirs. There's one man in particular I'm hoping will testify on our behalf. His name is Dr. Arthur Zeller. He's a hard man to get a hold of, but uh, we're working on it. This all sounds so iffy. Well, let's just take it one step at a time. First we see if it's juvenile court, then we keep our fingers crossed. Arnie, it's, it's after midnight. I gotta get these bills paid sometime. You know, you and I haven't had much chance to talk lately. Seems like all we do is talk. Yeah, about the case. What else is there? Us. You and me. Can we postpone this? No. Not anymore. What is it, Arnie? Don't you think it's enough that a son's accused of murder? We're all dealing with that. It's something else. Come on, just tell me. You're so sure. You, Kathy, Panetta, the medical examiner, you're all so sure that Chris is innocent. I'm not sure. And Chris is convinced he's not. You believe? Don't you think I want to believe he's innocent? He's my only son. I love him. He confessed. He remembers killing her. How could that be if it didn't happen? Because what he believes is wrong. I don't know what they said. I don't know what they did. But somehow they made him believe something that is not true. I know he's innocent. What if he's not, Barbara? What if he's not? Hello? Oh, hi, Lou. What is it? I understand. Okay, uh, we'll see you then. What happened? They're going to try Chris as an adult. He could get the death penalty. Your Honor, the defense has requested this preliminary hearing seeking to prevent the use of certain evidence by the state in their prosecution of Christopher Hansen. The first of these would be the typed, signed confession executed by Christopher Hansen at the Parker Police Station on the night of August the 15th of the same year. And second, any testimony relating to the bite mark or marks found on the body of the victim, Sally Frawley. The defense believes the confession was obtained improperly and that the bite mark evidence is inflammatory and irrelevant. Detective, after Dr. Irwin informed you that Christopher Hansen wished to voluntarily confess to the murder of Sally Frawley, what did you do next? Took his statement. Were there witnesses present? Myself, uh, Detective Hughes, Dr. Irwin, and the stenographer. Had the defendant been read his rights? Yes, he had. No further questions. Detective. Uh, at approximately what time did you begin questioning Chris Hansen? Uh, approximately 11.45 a.m. Was he considered a suspect then? Not at first, no. Well, when did you first determine he was a suspect? Uh, not until after 10.30 when he confessed to Dr. Irwin. Eleven hours later? When did you first read Chris's rights? Late afternoon, uh, 5.30, something like that. 
And about what time was Dr. Irwin first called in? Around 5.30. Now, was Dr. Irwin called in specifically to question Chris Hansen, who was not a suspect at the time, but who had been read his rights? <clears throat> yes. And by the time that Dr. Irwin arrived, had Chris Hansen begun exhibiting any kind of physical symptoms? Cold, shivering? Yes. Detective, was Chris Hansen ever given anything to eat by either you or anyone else during the 11 hours prior to his confession to Dr. Irwin? Well, he never asked for anything. Mm. At what point does the law require that you read somebody his rights? When he becomes a suspect. Or when he's charged with a crime? Yes. And does the law also require that a minor have a parent or guardian or legal representative with him during any questioning by the police? Only if he's a suspect. Which Chris Hansen wasn't. At least not until after 11 hours of being starved and interrogated. Objection. Sustained. Mm. One more question, Detective. There was quite a bit of physical evidence removed from the murder scene. Uh, clothing, blankets, buttons, and so on. Could you tell us whatever happened to this vital evidence? Objection, Your Honor. As defense knows, none of this evidence will be introduced. Well, I'd like the reason on the record. Answer the question, Detective. It was destroyed. How may I ask? Incinerated. Why? We didn't need it. We had a confession. No more questions. Without the confession, without the uh, physical corroboration, I don't think they have much of a case. So, they're destroying the evidence was good for us. <sighs> it's a sword that cut both ways. It might have proved your son is not over back. Come on. Ah. Dr. Carlton, what is your profession? I practice general dentistry. I'm also a specialist in forensic odontology. And would you tell us what that is? Study of bite marks. Did you examine a model of Christopher Hansen's dentation with regard to the bite marks found on the victim, Sally Frawley? I did. I uh, conducted tests to determine whether Christopher Hansen can be included or excluded as a possible suspect in the murder. And did you make a determination based on your expertise? I did. Christopher Hansen must be excluded. Uh, would you please show us why Christopher Hansen must be excluded? Well, there are a number of reasons. Um, most significantly, Chris Hansen wears a fixed retainer that would have left a specific bite mark on the victim, and uh, there's just no trace of that. Thank you very much. No more questions, Your Honor. Dr. Carlton, would you characterize forensic odontology as an exact science. I would. And yet we heard testimony earlier from the state's expert that the bite marks on Sally Frawley's body were made by the defendant. Does that surprise you? Not particularly. Why not? Scientists sometimes disagree. Exactly. Hmm. No further questions, Your Honor. <clears throat> so the witness may step down. Thank you. In that case, as all testimony relating to the subject of bite marks has been concluded, I'll rule on its admissibility now. It is my decision that while different opinions may exist as to whether or not the marks were caused by the defendant, there is sufficient cause to allow this evidence to be presented in court during trial. Since we're coming up on the hour, I suggest we adjourn for the day and reconvene tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. How bad is this? Oh, just the first round. This is our son's life we're talking about. What is it? <laughs> well, I, I just hope the judge's willingness to pass the bite mark evidence on to a jury doesn't indicate he'll go the same way with the confession. It could go either way. Either way. Come on, Chris.
Chris, I'll show you that new CD. Wait up. I can't imagine him in prison. He'd never survive. We can't let that happen. Been awfully quiet since we left the courthouse. Dr. Carlton's testimony. You were right. You and Kathy, you were right all along. Chris didn't hurt Sally. He could never. I don't know why I couldn't let myself believe it before. What kind of a father does that make me? I you're a good father, Arnie. Sometimes I don't know we don't see clearly. All that matters is what you feel right now. No, I don't want to make excuses. If I'm such a good father, why couldn't I see my own son? Chris. Yeah? Give me a hand. Thanks. That should do it. Yeah. Come on. Dad, do you remember when you were my age? Sure do. Did you ever get in trouble? All the time. Well, you always taught us that if we did something wrong, we should expect to be punished. That's true. I've been thinking a lot about that since Sally died. I'm just wondering what my punishment should be. I don't believe you. Did anything wrong. Because you didn't, you don't deserve any punishment. There's pictures of Sally today. I didn't hurt her like that. Did I? No, you didn't, Chris. I know you didn't. Now, why do I remember? They did something to you at the police station that confused you. I don't know why. I only know that what you remember never happened. I don't understand. Neither do I. But trust me, we'll get through this okay. You don't hate me anymore? I could never hate you. You're my son. I love you. Good news. Dr. Zella flew in last night. Great. Lou, you said he could make the difference, right? Well, if he can't, nobody can. Unless Judge Baldwin's got his mind set on this case going to trial. Let's see what happens first, all right? Remember, the confession is the key. If we can get that disqualified, I don't think the prosecution has much of a case left. Come on. We haven't even gotten up to bat yet. No further questions, Your Honor. Dr. Irwin, are you a medical doctor? No, I have a doctor in psychology. I see. Tell me, did you notice anything unusual in the physical condition of Chris Hansen when you were first introduced to him? He was cold and shivering. Anything else? His breathing was shallow and irregular. Pale? Yes. Disoriented? Somewhat. Are you familiar with the causes and symptoms of neurogenic shock? I am. 
Wouldn't you say that Chris Hansen was exhibiting classic symptoms of a person in neurogenic shock? You could just as easily say he was upset. What are some of the causes of neurogenic shock? Extreme stress, a frightening or emotionally devastating experience. Such as finding Sally Frawley's body? Objection calls for speculation. Dr. Irwin is an expert witness. Overruled, the witness may answer. It's possible. So you began questioning Chris Hansen, and based on your professional expertise, you concluded he was concealing information. It would be more accurate to say he was avoiding the information. And how did you go about getting him to confront it? First, I got him warmed up and lying down. So you helped him? Yes. Then I employed a technique called guided relaxation. Close your eyes. From that point on, he talked freely about what had happened. He was glad to get it out in the open. Could you describe to the court exactly what is guided relaxation? Using the sound of my voice. That's it. Speaking calmly and reasonably. I suggest to my patients that it's all right for them to set aside their tensions. Do you ask them to close their eyes? Usually. Take deep breaths? Yes. Tell me, have you ever used hypnosis in any of the therapy that you perform? No. So you're not trained or licensed or certified to use hypnotherapy? No. So guided relaxation is not hypnosis? Certainly not. No more questions. Well, tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Dr. Zeller, you are a medical doctor, is that correct? Psychiatrist, yes. You also have a particular specialty, one in which you write and lecture extensively. Is that also correct? Yes. And would you tell us what is that particular specialty? I'm considered an expert in the field of hypnosis. Therefore, you are familiar with the section in the American Life Encyclopedia dealing with hypnosis? Extremely familiar. Really? Well, why is that? I wrote it. Now, Dr. Zeller, in studying the materials that I sent you concerning this case, was it possible for you to reach a conclusion concerning the mental state of Chris Hansen at the time that he confessed? I was. I was able to conclude that Christopher Hansen, prior to his confession to the murder of Sally Frawley, was placed in a hypnotic state by Dr. Irwin. Dr. Zeller, are you familiar with the term guided relaxation? Yes, it's fairly common. And as to how this technique was used by Dr. Irwin in questioning Chris Hansen, how would you define guided relaxation? Hypnosis. Objection, Your Honor. Dr. Zeller is not a mind reader. How could he possibly evaluate a technique he never witnessed? On the contrary, Dr. Zeller is a mind reader. That is his profession. Clearly, his opinion is worth hearing. I'll allow it. Under hypnosis, is it possible to suggest to a subject that certain events occurred which actually never did? Yes. It's suggested that they try very hard to recall an event or an action that is then described to them. They ask to remember, so they do. Now, these memories, once implanted, are they easily removed? They're impossible to remove. They replace actual memories. The actual memory is lost. Now, how would you or someone like you go about implanting false memories in someone like Chris? First, you would gain his trust. Children are typically much more suggestible to hypnosis than adults. Compound that with neurogenic shock, hours of unbroken stress and the provision of food, and Christopher would have been in a highly distressed and receptive state. So he's offered relief? Yes, he wants very much to please the therapist. He's asked to visualize certain actions or events, and of course he does. Now, Dr. Irwin has stated that she did not hypnotize Chris. Is it possible to hypnotize someone and not even know that you're doing it? Yes. As to whether or not it was done intentional in this case, I couldn't speculate. I only know Chris Hansen was hypnotized. And in my opinion, it very likely influenced what he said subsequently in his confession. Could you tell us why is that? Because the confession has every aspect of pseudo 
or implanted memory. It's limited in focus, it has no clear before and after, and it doesn't fit the physical reality. It is a fantasy. Thank you very much. I have no more questions. I understand all that, but what happens if we lose? Well, we go to trial. Oh, we've still got plenty of ammunition left. It's not the end of the world. Maybe it'll be easier to convince a jury. And if we win? Well, I'm hoping they fold up their tents and go home and drop the case. How likely is that, Lou? Uh, how likely is it that things would have gotten this far? I don't know. Hey. I have a question. Yes, Chris. Dr. Zeller was saying how I imagined killing Sally. How I made it up. You were told to make it up. Yeah, but now how will I ever know if anything else I remember really happened or not? You will, Chris. If Dr. Zeller was sitting here right now, he'd tell you that what happened to you could never happen again. Because you're on your guard now. Courthouse. Well, I, uh, shall I start clearing this away? Or just. The judge wants us back in court at 10 a.m. in the morning. I was quick. Is that good? Well, we'll soon find out, won't we? issues before this court are far from black and white. Perhaps the simplest course of action would be to deny the remaining defense motion and let a jury decide whether or not the confession of Christopher Hansen has substance. As a judge, it is my duty to concern myself with the legality of these proceedings, not the motivations of the police or the prosecution. But as a lifelong member of this community, I can't help but ask myself why. Why was this young boy, obviously traumatized, taken away from the protection of his parents, and without benefit of counsel, subjected to a grueling, unrelenting interrogation? Coercion is coercion. And I see no difference between what happened here and actual physical cruelty. In fact, because of this boy's age and the surrounding circumstances, what happened here was far more insidious. In 1954, the United States Supreme Court ruled that any confession obtained through the use of hypnosis is inadmissible. Because there is little doubt Christopher Hansen was indeed hypnotized. I therefore grant the defense motion this confession be suppressed and disallow its use. No, I think it's very clear and I think it's very obvious. As I said right from the very beginning, the district attorney has no case against this young man. Chris Hansen is innocent. I hope the judge's ruling today will uh, discourage the district attorney from the embarrassment of a trial. Do you know yeah. if the police have any other suspects? Uh, as, as of now, we don't know. The police department has not made any inference uh, as to whether they'll continue the investigation, open the investigation, we don't know. Yeah. Honey, please. I'm so sorry for everything that's happened. 
I miss Sally terribly. And I miss you. Sally loved you. Do you still believe that Chris killed Sally? Bonnie, let's go. I don't know. I know we didn't. 